Hello, you are watching the latest edition of DBE TV News. Thank you for watching this bulletin every Friday on the DBE TV channel 122 on Open View at 12 p.m. and on the Department of Basic Education's YouTube channel. Welcome, I am Tsekhohajo Moachi. In our top stories this week, Applications for the fourth phase of the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative in the basic education sector will open next month. Minister Angie Motecha and Minister Gwede Mandashe have unveiled the newly built Waterkloof Hills Combined School in Rustenburg in the Northwest. The Gauteng Education Department launches the Future Shaper Lab at St. Barnabas School of Specialization in Randburg. The Eastern Cape Education Department is embarking on a school fencing project. Basic Education Minister Angie Motecha hosted a Women in Leadership Dialogue in the Sidibeng District. The dialogue was part of a build-up of activities that took place before the presidential Mbizo to be addressed by President Cyril Ramaphosa. The Mbizo was organized to interact with members of the public on issues affecting them and to find solutions to service delivery matters. At the dialogue, the minister urged women to work together. So you actually, for your own sake, need to lift others so that they give you the strength even for you to stay up. Because the chances are that if you pull down, you go down. Again, it's easy. How to get them? I don't want to get them But when you pull up, they are likely to go up also. So today's conversation should be about in our spaces of work. What are the things we can do for each other to be able to live as we rise to support each other? Because we do need these critical masses. If you are alone in that space, you can be lonely. Even if you're the only director, these men play golf together, they drink together, they smoke together. But how <laughs> right? So you need others also to cover your bed. And that's why you have to lift and make sure that you support consciously and deliberately. Not for that person, not for that person, but just as a woman to make sure that you lift others so that you also uh, are able to have the critical mass which enables you to stay where you are. Because if you don't support other women, why should they support you? Then they say, hey, we may sabotage each other. But if you are a saboteur yourself, why do you think other ones will not sabotage you? If you are a saboteur, then why do you sabotage you? But I really would want to speak my best to say, as women in education, what are the things that we do in building a better girl, building a better environment for women where we are? So that indeed, building a better environment for ourselves, what are the threats, what are the problems, what are the things that we can do will help us to be strong enough to be able to lift others. That should be a starting point. But the second one is, as women, if we say this world belongs to us, what is it that we do consciously and deliberately to build a better child? Do we have programs in the sector or even in our schools where indeed we deal head on with challenges that face the girl child. I will find it difficult if there is a principal, deputy principal, head of department, <coughs> especially in our schools where the problem of teenage pregnancy is alive and we're all quiet about it. We don't consciously and deliberately say unplanned and unintended pregnancy are a big problem for a girl child. The Basic Education Department is urging all young people between the ages of 18 and 34 who qualify to take part in the fourth phase of the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative to apply. 
the pre-application window will be open from the 5th of September 2022 until the 16th of October 2022, which will give every young person six weeks to place their application in a fair and open system. The first three weeks are for the young person to prepare themselves by gathering all the documents and information required. The applications officially open for all young South Africans from the 26th of September and will close on the 16th of October. This provides the youth of South Africa three weeks to place their application on sayouth.mobi. We are going to then open the applications uh, for everyone to start uh, placing their application from the 22nd of September. And that will run for three weeks from uh, 22nd of September up until the 16th of October. Uh, for those three weeks, we are requesting young people to come out in huge numbers and place their application so that we can receive young people from all corners of the country. And we are requesting our adults um, that they encourage the youth um, in their homes as their families, as their cousins, as their brothers, as uh, people that they know as friends, that they must apply for these job opportunities because we are looking for young people that did not participate in phase one or phase two or phase three. And um, we are also uh, wanting to inform the members of the public that uh, they should be looking forward uh, to being invited for interviews, those that uh, will be successful in being invited for the interview. It will be towards the end of November and beginning first week of uh, December that we are targeting uh, those weeks for interviews. And we want to also inform the members of the public that those that are successful from the interviews, the start date will be on the 1st of February and um, they will be informed properly by their schools um, on the starting date. And when they receive that call that they are successful, they have to, uh, that young person will have to sign the contract and they will also have to sign the job description that will tell them what are the duties that they are going to be participating on and they will also be requested to participate on the online generic orientation that is going to inform them of what is the project um, entailing so it will provide the detail of the project that online um, orientation uh, that is packaged uh, specifically for the young person that are going to participate in the presidential youth employment initiative. The Gauteng Education Department, in partnership with the NASDAQ-listed technology firm Honeywell, launched the Future Shaper Lab at St. Barnabas School of Specialization in Randburg. The Future Shaper Lab is a new robotics and coding education center that will help develop the skills of 200 learners per year at the school, which teaches a curriculum focused on mathematics, science and information, and communications technology. The lab will help develop digital skills and ignite logical and critical thinking in learners. Both learners and educators opting to participate in the program will learn more STEM and ICT focused skills in addition to the usual computer literacy education curriculum at the school. The program now includes outcome focused courses on coding, programming and robotics, as well as coding clubs, holiday training camps and hackathons to maximize learner interactivity and participation. MEC Banyazali Sufi has thanked Honeywell for their contribution to education, saying it will go a long way in improving the lives of learners. I went to Tembisa High, a school of specialization in tourism and hospitality. When I opened the class, I thought I would see a chalkboard. There was a beautiful five-star bed inside the classroom. 
with our children taught how to make it possible. We are saying to ESCO, come and partner with us. You can speak about load shading and other things. Just adopt one school and teach our children about energy. You will never have load shading forever in our country. So these are the schools of specialization that we want to launch across Kaudi. But today I'm proud that I'm at your school to teach you about coding, robotics, and to partner with an international company called Honeywell. And I'm happy that the president took you through what they do. But there's something that always excites me about Honeywell. I always tell people when I speak about Honeywell Press that the mere fact that aeroplanes can collide is the communication <laughs> network of Honeywell. This is the company that makes aeroplanes not to collide because the communication of aeroplanes communicating to each other is made by this beautiful company. We brought that company to our school today, dear learners. I hope you understand that. <laughs> He went on to encourage learners to do their best as they are the future of the country. So protect this investment, my dear children. Use that laboratory. You can accuse me of any other thing, but you'll never accuse me that I've never created opportunities for you. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Take advantage of it because you are the future of this country. They can say whatever they want to say. You are the future of this country. And if we can't invest in you, we'll never invest in this country. You are the generation come 2030, my dear children. We will stand in front of the world. We'll stand in front of everyone to say this generation have defeated poverty. This generation have defeated inequality. This generation does not want hand out. They want opportunities. And this is the generation that will lead this country. I'm proud of you, my dear children. Take this opportunity. You miss it, you've missed it forever. Meanwhile, the company has also given details of the additional work that is being done. So there's lots of tech that Honeywell does, lots of areas and segments we involve in. And at the heart of what we do is technology. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is at the heart of what we do at Honeywell. And yes, we often talk about going into engineering, becoming technicians, but I also want to encourage you to become artisans, electricians, plumbers, because a great engineer is useless without somebody to help them do it. Right? So today I want to speak to you about STEM, the importance of STEM. It's at the heart of what Honeywell does. There's a few things we do as a company. We have three pillars in terms of our, our, our programs for CSI. The first pillar is inclusion and diversity, where we drive a team to be inclusive and diverse, not just in terms of race, but also in terms of religion, also in terms of age. We want people from all groups because we're trying to solve the world's complex problems in any world. And you can't solve a complex problem with people who speak the same, think the same, and all look the same. You need the diversity in your thinking to give birth to new ideas. So I and D is an important part of our business. Coming up, we find out more about a newly built combined school in the Northwest. Research is showing that NESFAS supporting students on average are performing better than non-NESFAS supported students, which is also something that is very important because it says this almost complete wraparound program by government of NESFAS students is become very important. Also, the change from NESFAS being a loan to being a bursary has also made a very big difference because it has now even opened access to students, even in those institutions that were unaffordable in the earlier phase of NESFAS. Universities that have been more expensive, like your University of Cape Town, Stellenbosch, Wits University, Pretoria, there's been a huge increase of the numbers of black students from poor families directly as a result of, of NESFAS and the kinds of difference that it has actually made. I am a nurturer like you. you. Real men stand against gender-based violence. I get hurt like you. If I am a victim of violence, I too will not be ashamed to report violence and abuse. I hate it when someone violates me, like you. 
in a violent situation, there is power in walking away. I will not take part in fights at school. All I want is to feel safe, to feel loved, and to be free to show love. Like you. I cry when I'm hurt, because to feel is to be human. I pledge to be more open about my emotions. Make it part of the new normal for young boys to be nurtured and loved, to freely express themselves and to show love in a safe, inclusive way. We have different gender identities, but first, we are human. If you need assistance to help your child, contact Childline on 08000 555 5. Basic Education Minister and Jimotecha, together with Minerals and Energy Minister Gwede Mandashe, have thanked Royal Bafugeng Platinum for the newly built Waterkloof Hills Combined School in Rustenburg in the Northwest. The minister officially unveiled the school, built by Royal Bafugeng Platinum, in partnership with the Northwest Education Department. The construction of Waterkloof Hills Combined School ensures that the infrastructural improvements are in line with the norms and standards of the DBE. The school can accommodate a total of 2,155 learners, with 1,280 learners in the primary and 875 learners in the secondary school. Minister Mantashe said the partnership shows the ongoing support for learning and teaching to continue, especially in mining towns. The Gauteng Education Department has expressed their satisfaction as the online application process runs smoothly. On the 1st of August, almost 600,000 applications had been successfully processed since the start of the 2023 online admissions application period in July. The 2023 online admissions application period for grades 1 and 8 will close on the 19th of August 2022 at midnight. The Provincial Education Department says the online admissions system has proven to have, been, to have functioned seemingly with minimal challenges as a large number of parents and guardians have been able to apply without any major difficulties. As the Gauteng Department of Education, we are excited to announce that Almost 600,000 grade one and eight applications have since been successfully processed in the system since we started with the process of 2023 online admissions on the 22nd of July, 2022. As of today, the 5th of August, 2022, the system has recorded over 250,000 grade one and just over 345,000 grade 8 applications, which brings us to over 595,000 applications processed up to so far. This is a, an indication that the system works very well and we are quite proud of uh, what the system can do. We just want to call upon parents to apply online. The system will shut down on the 19th of August, 2022 means that you have 14 days to apply in the system. Continue to engage us on our call center 0800 000 789. We just want to call upon those parents that would have um, opted to upload their documents on the system. They don't need to submit those. But if you have not uploaded, you can submit those documents. To apply, parents and guardians must visit www.gdeadmissions.gov.za and register to create unique login credentials for their application profile. Stay tuned. After the break, we hear from the Free State Education MEC as he sends a message to young girls. Everyone has their own definition of what education is and means. What is yours? TED is a show that seeks to challenge the status quo by inviting guests that have a role and an inspiring story to tell about their journey in education. A lot of it is not learner-centered. This show seeks to dive in deeper conversations in quest of answering the big question, why education, when there's so much to do outside of it? Why invest energy and resources that are so impactful in our society? You're seeing a, a cartoon character that looks like you yes. counting to 10. This show airs on DBE TV channel 122. In case you miss it, binge watch it on YouTube, DBE TV. And also don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, simply DBE TV.
normally during the holidays we package, we know all our learners that are often uh, learners that are child-headed families, so we know them. So every time when we close the schools and then we package, small package each child so that we make sure that during the holiday they have something on the table. And sometimes we do deliver the food at their homes during the holiday, making sure that they get something during the holidays. It's actually one of the most successful because on a daily basis, we provide over 9 million learners nationwide on a daily basis. So for us, that is a proud, a proud program that we really want to, to take further and make sure that you know, the learners are provided for in terms of their future. The Eastern Cape Education Department has begun a process of fencing schools to curb vandalism of schools and the theft of school belongings. Provincial MEC Fundile Gade met with the construction companies that have been appointed to do fencing in the province. This project will benefit 191 schools. Over 200 million rand has been set aside for this project. Gade says the program will assist with job creation within the province while ensuring that schools remain a safe haven for learners and teachers. We need safe schools, we need safe environment, we need an aggressive uh, program of fencing. Hence we took a decision to roll out plan uh, today. The, we are going to appoint um, SMEs uh, also so as to benefit uh, in that particular context and ensure that Koha uh, does uh, give us uh, from the database that they have uh, qualified uh, expertise from the contractors on their own database and the procurement has already been done uh, for that one. We are quite very uh, optimistic uh, that by end of next week they will be finalizing uh, the few uh, hiccups uh, in terms of contracting of some few of them which are a bit um, not more than 20 of them, the contractors that should be appointed by now. But the rest have already been, uh, been uh, secured. So we want to turn things around, around uh, the youth employment, around uh, the participation of the SMEs in the province, around ensuring that at least when kids come to school, at least they get what they want and uh, on a safe environment. Free State Education MEC Tate Mahwe has urged young girls in the province to work hard and to never give up. Mahwe says girl children can be anything they want to be if they put their minds to it. He has cautioned against being despondent and lacking vision, saying in order to reach their dreams, giving up is never an option. This thing of thinking as young girls that your destiny is determined by somebody else must come to a stop. You must walk tall. In Kwakwa, one of the girls, Anasna Batwa, Anasna Next, Aja, that food after school, Bamufadi Jose, Ayakasona High, even for the weekend. Haji Bualona today, she's doing third year medicine at Vets University and she's a top learner at Vets. And that's the spirit we want to inculcate in our children. The spirit of not giving up. The spirit of fighting. The spirit of giving. When you are successful, don't be successful alone. Help others. That's how we end this bulletin this week on Channel 122 on Open View and on YouTube. Thank you for watching.